coming off a four game win streak. You had two in Texas. Talk about those last two games. Uh, last two went, went extremely well for us. Um, we uh, took a seven hour trip and we played the same day we took the trip. So. Um, to pull that off and get a win out of that's good, but it was it was an exciting game. We uh, won two to one in overtime. Uh, we actually won uh, the game in the first is probably within the first 30 seconds of overtime, which is a pretty rare thing to do. So that was an exciting way to do the first one. That's against Ranger on uh, on Friday night, and then uh, Sunday we went up. We had a game against uh, Cisco College just down the road. Uh, team that was nine and six. Uh, they just got done playing Northern to a zero-zero tie, and uh, you know we thought it was you know a game that was really going to be a battle. We ended up winning it uh, three to nothing, and and uh, really controlled the game. So we're really really pleased with the way the weekend went. Really pleased. The, if I'm not mistaken, the uh, game-winning goal in overtime mm -hmm. was uh, an intercepted pass back to the goalkeeper. That was in the Cisco game. Cisco, Cisco game. That was actually the game uh, that that led off it. The Cisco game was 0-0 at halftime. We, I would say we were ahead in the game. I mean, we were the favorites in the game after halftime, but uh, just never found the net. And then uh, right after halftime, Blake Lutz, uh, kind of, they went to pass back to their keeper and headed it back, and he actually headed it out of the air into the net, which is a pretty impressive way to score. Um, but he just read the play really well, took off from a distance, kind of a hustle goal, and got this ball rolling. And once we scored, and, and the way it is in soccer a lot, once we scored, the, the dam broke, I guess, and it just kind of kept happening after that. Was, so. that the, was that his only score of the game? Um, in the Cisco game, yes, that was his only goal, his only goal. Um, Donnie George scored another one on a really nice shot from about 30 yards out, probably. Um, he, uh, we've dropped Donnie back to defender, and he's actually scored two goals since then. He's been playing midfield all year, so. For some reason, we're getting more offensive out of him as a defender. He gets some opportunities to come up, um, which is working out well. And the Skyler Shepard got his third one on the weekend in that Cisco game to, to get to three goals. So. Take that momentum into the Ranger game, and uh, it takes overtime to win that one? Uh, but I, well, we're kind of talking about it backwards. Ranger was the first game of the weekend. Yeah, whenever we started talking about the goal, I went all the way into Cisco. But yeah, Ranger was the first game. And it, uh, uh, I'm trying to, if I remember correctly, it was. Uh, it was 1-0 at halftime. I think we were down, actually down, um, but felt like we were doing fine. Felt like we were doing fine. We weren't. We, you, there's games where you're down and you're like, and you feel the pressure. And there's games when you're down and you feel like we're we've, we're working the ball where we want to. Things are going to happen. It's just a matter of time. And got got one in the second half to even it up. And could have got a couple other. Adam Young, actually a defender, pushed up, had a cross that actually rolled across the crossbar instead of instead of going in the net, and and nobody could get in on the other end of it. Um, probably about five minutes left in the game, just pressure like that the whole half. And then finally, in, in, once we got to overtime, uh, Skyler buried one of his prettiest shots of the year. It's just an upper 90 shot. It's just beautiful, exciting way to finish. And uh, you're ringed up today? Yeah, we uh, found out about an hour ago. We're supposed to be on the bus right now, headed to uh, Allen County. Um, and, and we scheduled this one earlier this year, and it just wasn't meant to be, I guess. Got rained out, and their field was holding water. Um, and they've had rain the last two nights in a row where we've had barely any, but it's at their place and it is what it is. And we just, I don't think we're this late in the season, I don't think we're going to be able to reschedule it. We're late enough now to put another game in, you get into the playoff territory and it's what not room. What does the remainder of your season look like? Um, looks at, we've got uh, four games left now, four games left now. We go up to uh, St. Louis to play St. Charles Community College on uh, Friday. A team that we beat twice last year, but has a lot better record this year, and they're looking pretty solid. So that's that's going to be a battle. Um, then we come back on Sunday to play Forest Park. I hate playing those Sunday games, but they're going to be in town uh, trying to get a double header. Um, so we're going to play them on Sunday. Um, they're they're a decent team. Team we're going to have to work at. Um, probably not as strong as St. Charles, but pretty good, pretty quality team. Um, and then Thursday next week's the big Northern rematch. This week we need to win that one to force a playoff. Um, and then we'll finish out against Northeast Texas, who we was actually our second game this season. So, um, um, we hated not playing today, but it's probably not a bad time for it. Um, we've got uh, uh, Lane Chapman, our, our center mid, has just been struggling, with, not with injury, but with things like shin splints. He's got a knee that bothers him from time to time. Um, he he took practice off yesterday, hoping he'd be recouped for the game today. So it'd be nice just to give him a day off today as well and get him recouped. Um, other than that, we've got a few guys kind of nicked up and sore, you know, from a two-game weekend, back-to-back -back games. But we really don't have anybody injured, so we're we're doing pretty well. Doing pretty well. So. Good luck in St. Charles. Thank you very much.